joins now to discuss BTC price and more is Anthony Sicaro, founder at Providence Financial and Insurance Services. Hi, Anthony. Thanks for joining us. So just want to get your outlook on Bitcoin right now. What, I mean, there's so much going on, macroeconomic factors as well as tax season, but a couple of catalysts in that we're hearing that there is a lot of institutional interest. Yeah, I, I think the bigger picture with Bitcoin is that it, it hasn't turned out to be the inflation hedge that people thought. Um, it was designed initially to be an inflation hedge because as the government prints dollars and more dollars become available and Bitcoin yet has this finite amount of 21 million, that if the volume of double of dollars double, then the amount of Bitcoin value should double as well too. But it hasn't really panned out that way. Um, and I think a lot of the reason is because it's just not liquid enough. And in Investors now, even though it was supposed to be considered an asset class like gold that was not really correlated to anything per se, it seems to be correlated more to the stock market and the sentiment that's going on there. Uh, so I think we have to pay attention to what's driving the market. And I think a lot of that is also going to be what's driving Bitcoin. But right now, Bitcoin's just barely hanging on to that 40,000 level in the last 24 hours. It, it is down by four or five percent. Now it's popped above that 40,000. So I think that's a big threshold. And it could go one way or the other, and, and who knows which way that's going to be. Is it going to go back to 30 or is it going to go back to 50? Because uh, it could go either way. It's interesting that there is a battle of narratives because those who are, you know, passionate Bitcoiners at their heart believe that Bitcoin is an inflation hedge. And they're holding. We're seeing on-chain data showing that the people the, that are holding onto Bitcoin right now that are accumulating are likely long-term holders. They're the Bitcoin whales, if you will. Whereas We've seen a lot of institutional adoption recently. And so we are seeing a correlation with the market. So what in the end of the day, eventually, you know, a year from now, two years, what, which narrative do you think will eventually win out? I think the long-term narrative, for sure, is what's eventually going to win out. Um, right now, there's just so much volatility because there's not a lot of adoption. I mean, I think only 16% uh, or 40 million Americans around there have actually used Bitcoin at all. That's a large percentage of Americans, but it's not anywhere near the percentage of Americans that use the dollar. Uh, <laughs> so the reality is, is that in order for Bitcoin to be more stable and to, for it to be used as a currency, which I think it could go that direction, the reality is, is that it has to be adopted. It has to be much more stable. Right now, in my own portfolio, I don't own a lot of Bitcoin. I'm looking at it as a speculative investment. It's an asset class for me. If I'm dealing with clients, and, and I deal with mostly older clients, so it's not really a part of their portfolio, but with the few clients that I do deal with in Bitcoin, the reality is it's an asset class. It's a small amount. It's a speculative, aggressive. You better have the stomach for it. You better have the cash for it. Mm -hmm. But I think in, in 10 years, I think whatever Bitcoin you own now is going to be worth multiples, and I think you're going to be really glad that you owned it. So I wonder what is your allocation right now, and what is the strategy? Are you telling folks to hold on, to accumulate, or have you been decreasing exposure? No, right now the strategy is this hold. Uh, it's too volatile to try to trade. If you're a day trader in Bitcoin today, that's a, just a way to lose money because you have no way to know which way it's going to go. I think the best strategy for Bitcoin is the best strategy for any other asset class out there and that simple dollar cost averaging with whatever that means for you and whatever you can afford. Don't put in more than you can afford to lose. That's true for any investment, but I think it's doubly true for Bitcoin. We have to remember this is still a brand new technology. There are governments out there that have uh, outlawed it or tried to outlaw it. Uh, I don't think that's happening in America. The fact that there are ETFs validating it, the fact that they want to regulate it, I think that's all good for the price of Bitcoin. So I'm a long-term investor, but I think you need to dollar cost average into it. Don't try to time it. Don't try to get in, get out and try to time it. And that can be tempting to do with as much volatility as there is, but don't do and it. And what kind of allocation are you recommending according to your net investable income. I, I sorry, I did not hear you one more time. What Christine. kind of allocation are you suggesting for your net investable income into Bitcoin? Small. Small. And it certainly depends on where you like are. Like a percentage. Uh, but if you're gonna 
Yeah, percentage, anywhere between 1% and 5%. Uh, I definitely wouldn't go much over 5 Now, if you've got a bunch of cash flow and you've got a bunch of money in the bank that you just don't plan on needing or a bunch of money in investments, maybe you do go 10%. That's a mm-hmm. huge allocation, in my opinion, but it all depends on you, very specific. But I'm going to say generally 1% to 5%, probably a good number, just like it is for any other asset and, class. And Goldman recently stated in, in a note that they believe there is a 35% chance of a recession over the next two years. And what are your thoughts on that? And, you know, what will would the impact be on Bitcoin and the markets? Yeah, so I agree with that. I think that there, in the next couple of years, there is a great chance of a recession. The market has now had uh, 13 years of upside where the market's almost been at, at 15% return or so. Um, and we just know that nothing goes up forever. And, uh, you know, and, and whatever goes up in the world of the market must go down. And, and the reverse is also true. Whatever goes down must go up. But where probably at a peak in the market. Uh, Bank of America strategists recently said that they think that the market for the next 10 years is going to be maybe low single digits, maybe even negative return. And the fact that you had the two and the 10 year, 30 year, I'm sorry, the two and the 10 yield curve invert also has been a typical um, you know, forecaster of a recession as well. So I, I think any time within the next maybe 12 to 24 months, maybe even a little sooner than that, uh, the Goldman's going to be right, and we definitely are going to have a recession. And the effect it's going to have on Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin's going to follow the broad market as well. But again, we'll have to see. 2021 was good for the market, not so good for Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, if, if, if 2023 or four is bad for the market, will Bitcoin follow it? Or will, you know, will it be a good place was good to be for Bitcoin. Bitcoin. 